Hey, I know what you came to this video for. You want the money. You want to make more money. You've been tra probably trying to scale your business and make more money as a creative. You feel like you've been struggling. You've probably been so challenged. Well, the good thing is you came to the right video. In this video, I'm going to show you and tell you how I scaled my business as a graphic designer all the way up to an agency owner. And I'm going to give you some practical tips, some practical steps that you can use to implement into your business to start scaling your business today, not tomorrow, not in a week from now, but today. So as a graphic designer, when I first started, I was doing nightclub flyers for my own nightlife business. And to make nightclub flyers, you know how much I was getting paid? Zero dollars. And I'd spend hours and hours working on these nightclub flyers and I was not a good client for my own business, right? Then I was starting to get paid from companies to do their flyers from other nightlife events. And one of my first projects was one of my mentors and he paid me $30 to do a flyer and it took me three hours. I was making like $10 an hour and I was like, oh my gosh. Over time, as my career progressed, as I opened up my first brick and mortar California printing and I moved into the printing industry, I started charging more for my flyers. I was charging at the minimum 50, but over time I ended up charging 150 for that same design that I was doing just a couple years previous. So I was making a lot more money per hour and I was doing them even faster. So one of the first points I wanna make to you guys is increasing the ticket price or the price that you're charging for flyers or for design in general. Now, I get a lot of comments on this channel from people that are from the US or from other countries that are complaining about people in India doing logos for five bucks. This is not an India problem. This is an educational problem. As part of why I've created this channel is they are only hurting themselves and they're hurting the industry, but they're more hurting themselves than anybody else. So I really want you to take this into consideration by charging more, you're gonna be able to provide a better outcome for your clients. Just charging the least amount possible is not a long-term sustainable strategy. People are gonna be used to cheap and you're only gonna attract cheap. So this is the first thing I want you to really take away from this video is raise the ticket price on your jobs from 30, 40, $50 and double or triple the price. If you start doing that tomorrow, you're not gonna lose business over it. And if you do, good. Because those are the people that you don't want to work with. Cheap clients are the worst clients. The second thing that I implemented in my business that really helped along my journey is I started with doing just graphic design. Then I added on printing. Well, how often do people need to get printing done? Well, pretty often. They get flyers, they get business cards, they get websites, or they get banners, they get vehicle graphics. There's all kinds of printing that you can do for people. And so increasing the frequency and the amount of offers that you can make for your clients is a really good way to make more money and increase the lifetime value of this client. So this is something I really want you to take into consideration, something I implemented into my business by doing printing and then doing marketing. I've increased the frequency more and more and more as time goes on to get these clients to come back to me for more things. This can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. If you add too much to your plate, then you're gonna become a jack of all trades, master of none. So you wanna be careful about this, but adding on printing or adding on web design, these are good ways to increase the lifetime value. The third thing that changed within my business that I want you to understand before I get into the big tips is positioning. When I first started as a graphic designer, I was just a little mom and pop retail shop. You come in, get your stuff done, you walk out. It was a great experience, but it was really small mom and pop business. As I've continued to grow as a creative, as a designer, as an entrepreneur, and as a business owner, I've positioned myself as an authority by teaching on YouTube, by getting on stages, by doing podcasts, by being on a radio show. All these things have, I've done have positioned me as an authority and as an expert in my field and has allowed me to charge these higher prices. I can charge $1,000 an hour for the consulting that I do. I could have never done that when I had my little mom and pop print shop. It wasn't going to work. So you need to start thinking about how you can position yourself as an authority in your space, maybe teaching other people in the industry, maybe teaching your clients. How can you position yourself as an expert? And if you're not doing that now, I wanna encourage you to join our Instagraphics Pro Network group on Facebook because we're teaching our people in that group how to become an expert as a creative. The fourth thing, and I touched on this very briefly in my earlier point, is the client types. The type of clients that you bring on board is gonna determine your success. If you're bringing on cheap clients and doing it $5 logos, you're gonna get these people that use you one time and then go to somebody else. You wanna have high paying, high ticket, long-term, loyal clients that actually want a relationship with you and that see the value in what you do, especially if you've positioned yourself as an authority, 
They are going to trust you. You're going to be adding value. You're going to be educating them and they're not going to want to lose you. I noticed that the higher I charge for clients, the better clients I attract and the better clients I attract, the better of a business I have. So you really need to take this to heart. I want you to take this seriously is you need to work with better clients and understand the type of clients that you have now because 80% of the headaches you have are probably coming from the 20% of your clients that are the worst nightmare clients. And you could flip flop that and actually get the best clients and charge more money and you'll have a much happier experience as a creative. Now, number five, before I get into the meat and potatoes of what you came here for is your systems and processes. This is something that I had to to take a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of work to put into my business to, in order to scale and produce the amount of volume of work to be able to handle the volume work. Just adding more sales is not going to fix your problem. Just increasing the ticket price is not going to fix your problem. Will that help? Sure. But ultimately you need to improve your systems and processes, your sales, your marketing, your fulfillment, your operations, and your finance. All of these need to have systems and processes that are not just systems and processes that are created, but are followed. And you can't have other people in your business follow them if you don't document them. So documenting these is another important way. And I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute. So I got a quick question for you. If you were to actually get to the point where you were like us and you were scaled to hundred thousand dollars a month, we've, we've passed that now, but you were able to do that in your business, all that extra money, what would you do with that money? I want to know. Please let me know down in the comments below. If you had $100,000 a month coming in and you added all this income to your business, how would that impact your life and what would you do with it? I wanna know, drop a comment down below. I wanna to get to meet you, I wanna hear from you. I look forward to reading your comments. All right, so let's jump into it. I know you've been waiting and you're ready. How do I scale my agency? Well, I gave you some good tips already, but now we're gonna get into the meat and the potatoes. The first thing is understanding the demand. A lot of people are chasing and selling services that don't have a lot of demand. I've made this mistake myself over the years. I forgot that the websites were the biggest demand of any other service I had sold. I've sold more websites than anything else that are an important part of my business. And so I need to continue to follow that demand, create products, create promotions, educate the market on websites to bring them into my funnel. That is essentially a lead magnet. You need to follow demand. What are people looking for? If you're part of a music group and people are looking for music videos, well, there you go. You can fulfill that demand. Look at the marketplace and look at the problems that are in the marketplace. If, if you're seeing a lot of bad logo designs or you're seeing a lot of bad print designs or flyer designs, these are the types of things that you need to create and you need to follow demand because that is what's going to pay the most and get them as a client into your client list. The second thing you're going to need to implement into it is an irresistible offer. How do you create an irresistible offer? Well, if you're doing something that you think is worth a thousand dollars, then you need to show $10,000 worth of value. I'm serious. A thousand dollars that you think it's worth, you need to be able to show $10,000 worth of value. That is what I consider an irresistible offer. Now, let me give you a quick example of that. I couldn't just say it, but I want to show you guys. If I have a coaching program where I'm going to work with you for 90 days, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to scale your business from zero to six figures or from a thousand to $10,000 a month or more. I'm going to show you how to become a better designer. I'm going to show you how to get the best clients you've ever had. I'm going to take you through this entire journey over 90 days, and it's going to add millions of dollars potentially to your income and at the very bare minimum, six figures to your income. I'm going to charge you guys 10 grand for that. But my irresistible offer, if you take advantage of it is only a thousand bucks today, but you got to do it today. That's what I would call an irresistible offer. Now, if I even did one better and said, I have a sales trainer that's going to come in and teach you the best tricks, the best strategy on sales as part of that offer, you're like, oh my gosh, I was already sold on it before when it was just you, right? That's called an irresistible offer. What can you add or what are you already doing inside of your existing service that you're maybe not getting credit for that you can put a value next to? Itemize all of the things that you're doing, research, project management, um, uh, content creation, asset uh, research, all the different things that you're doing as a graphic designer, web designer, motion designer, you can put a value next to each of those things and add them up and then show the grand total and then discount it down and show, Hey, this is what I'm offering it for. This is a thousand dollars worth of value and I'm offering it for 500 bucks, right? That is a really good way to increase the value and to show what I call offer stacking. Number three, this is a big one. Are you ready? Serving versus selling. A lot of people are out there trying to sell their services. Hey, I do graphic design and logo design. You want to use me? You should use me for graphic design and logo design. That is not how you approach selling. That is not selling. 
Selling is when you're serving people. Hey, what's going on? What's the most impactful thing happening in your business right now? Oh, you know, I just opened up a brand new store and I'm just trying to get it all set up. Oh, wow, do you have your signage done already? No, I don't have my signage. Man, uh, you know, what are you? What type of time frame are you looking at to get your, your store open? Oh, you know, I'm looking at it in the next like 90 days. Okay, cool, have you started looking into graphic designers? Are you making some, some decisions there? No, not quite yet, I'm gonna do it in like two weeks. Wow, okay, so you look like you're gonna, you're, you're looking to do some research, right? So you wanna probably find the best designer possible for your signage. Yeah, yeah, I wanna make sure, you know, cause I got really good uh, retail frontage, I wanna make sure I get the best design possible so I can attract people into my store, yeah. I think that's really important. So what are some, what are some of the decision factors you're looking at when it comes to your signs? Well, I wanna make sure that it's big, I wanna make sure I'm not paying too much, right? They're gonna start telling you things about the sales process and now you can use those as information gathering to serve them. Hey, look, I understand that you're looking for something on a budget. You wanna make sure that it's highly impactful. Here are some ideas for you that I wanted to share. Don't try to sell them, share the ideas freely. And they go, man, you really have a lot of information and you have a lot of knowledge. You're, you're really good at this, huh? And I'm like, yeah, I am really good at this. Now you're offering value without expecting anything in return. And they're gonna go, hey, are you available? Could you do my design? Yeah, absolutely. You want them to ask you, again, pulling the rope, I say this a lot, versus pushing the rope. That's how you're selling. When you're selling, you're going there to serve them, not to sell them. You wanna give them the solutions to the problems that they're giving you. All right, step number four to scaling your business to six figures a month is you need to start delegating. You cannot be a one-man show. It would be very hard to be a one-man show and scale to six figures. You're gonna to need to start delegating other parts of your business. So what are the other parts of your business? Well, you got sales, marketing, finance, operations, and fulfillment. Right now, you're probably wearing all of those hats, which is a lot of work. You need to start handing that stuff off, getting a bookkeeper, getting an accountant, getting a marketer, somebody that actually can do your marketing for you and subbing that part of it out. Maybe you're not good at sales and you just wanna do the fulfillment. Getting a salesperson like myself or somebody else in our network and part of the Instagraphics Pro Network. Maybe you're just not ready to do any of those things and you just wanna have the business run itself, so you go hire out and delegate to all of those parts. I'm starting to get to that place in my business and that's why I've scaled to six figures because I've basically worked myself out of a job which is ultimately what you wanna do and you can't do that without the right systems, processes, and really understanding your business inside and out and understanding your client's problems inside and out. All right, the last one, and this is one that many people miss and I think you guys are gonna really love this. This is number five of how to scale your business to six figures a month and this is nurturing. A lot of people drop the ball and this is where I get a lot of complaints and why I take a lot of clients from other people is because they're not nurturing these relationships. There's long-term thinking versus short-term thinking. The short-term thinking people, all they do is they wanna go in there and sell the website, get the monthly hosting fee and then boom, off and they hope they never hear from that client again because they don't wanna do any additional work, they just wanna collect the monthly fee. This is a very bad business model and this is what the majority of the marketplace is doing right now. You need to be thinking long-term. Are you there to serve them? Or are you there to sell them? Again, being a giver versus being a taker. I think this is a really important analogy that you can use to tell your clients, hey, I'm gonna be here with you every step of the way. And if you're gonna tell them that, you actually need to be there with them every step of the way, not just at the beginning. In the middle and in the end are important phases of this because they're gonna give you referrals, they're gonna have other projects come up. I actually have it set up in my process where I actually meet with the client at least every 90 days and I touch bases with them at least once a month. This is something that you should be doing in your business as well, is the more meetings you have with them, those are other opportunities to serve them, to find out how their business is going. If you're there to serve them, they're going to feel that and when they go, oh, I have this problem, who should I call? Who's the person that's always there for me? It's gonna be you. This is what happens to me all the time. This is why I've attracted the types of clients that I have. And the bigger the clients, the bigger the projects, and the more work, and the bigger the lifetime value becomes for me. So these are the five tips that I wanted to share with you of how we got to six figures and how you can get to six figures. If you actually apply these, this will be transformational for your business and you'll be able to start scaling to massive pr proportions even beyond six figures a month. So. Out of all those tips, I wanna know what was your biggest takeaway. Drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Getting your feedback, what you love, what you didn't love. I wanna know what works for you and what maybe things that you're already doing. Drop a comment below, introduce yourself. I'd love to hear from you. Scaling your business, your creative business, or your creative agency is not just about bringing in more sales. It's about serving more people and improving your processes and your systems for yourself and for your team and for your clients. The better and the quicker and the more efficient you become, 
the better you're gonna be able to serve your clients and serve your team. And I want you to serve your team first, even before you serve your clients, because these are your people that are up behind you, that are in the boat with you, that are rowing in the same direction, that are gonna help your business become the success that you really want it to be. And if you suck at sales, this is something that I can help you with. This is something I've been actively working on, but it's probably because you don't have a solid sales process in place. If any part of your business is struggling, it's probably because you don't have a solid sales process. Now, having a process is one thing, but actually implementing it and sticking to it and applying it is another. And you can't do that without having documentation. Not only do we create documentation for all these processes, whether sales, marketing, fulfillment, operations, or finance, but then we actually take and create Loom videos where we send those to our team explaining those documents so there's no confusion and no issues and no disconnects in that. This is something that will help you scale very quickly. If you can document it and create video trainings or video instructions of each of those documents, you're gonna be light years ahead of all of your competition. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below. I'm here to help you scale your creative business, scale your graphic design business, web design, motion design business. And if you need any support, we give a lot of support in our community, the Instagraphics Pro Network on Facebook. All you gotta do is fill out all of the questions and we'll let you in. If you don't, we can't let you in, but we'd love to have you there as a community. We're thriving as business owners and as individuals. We're working on our health, our wealth, and our relationships to become three-dimensional designers. And I look forward to seeing you guys there. My name is Adrian Boisel. Until the next video, keep looking up.